The retail value for this telescope is $170 on Amazon right now, which is pretty much double the Celestron 70mm that I first got. But is it twice as good? Well, it's complicated. The Power Seeker 127EQ, this telescope right here, is a lot heavier and bigger than my old telescope, um, which means it's also sturdier. But moving this guy around is definitely a two-hand job. I store it inside, usually with the legs um, completely retracted, so it sits lower and takes up less space. But when I want to take it outside, I have to extend those legs. And while it can be done with, you know, by myself, it's a lot easier with a second person, someone to somebody to hold the telescope and somebody to extend the legs. Either that or you have to kind of crawl around the, the floor extending each leg at a time, which works too. On the other hand, something cheaper and more portable like this, oops, <laughs> as you can see, it's very easy to move around, um, which I, which is a benefit of that telescope. So weight and portability isn't necessarily a winner for this telescope. That being said, this mount is no cheapo camera tripod. <laughs> This is an equatorial mount. That means with the right setup, it is very easy to track objects across the night sky. But what I love about it is that with these little knobs, you can make fine adjustments to the positioning of the telescope, which makes finding an object uh, really easy once you, you, well, you loosen these knobs, turn it as you wish that way. This knob on the back here can go up and down for aligning it, but I just use it for, for finding objects. And then uh, you can rotate also this way. But I really love this fine-tuning capability here. This scope also requires collimation, which I have to admit I still haven't done. From what I've read, that can be a little tricky and definitely takes patience, but it's kind of required if you are going to get a reflector telescope such as this. I got this from second hand, so I didn't have to do that. The finder scope up here is pretty much the same as the finder scope on my other cheaper in fact, I'm pretty sure this is the exact same finder scope. Now these finder scopes are what you use to find something before you look through the telescope because it has a wider field of view, so it makes you know easier to find stuff. With this finder scope, the image is reversed, so up is down and down is up, left is right, and vice versa, which can be tricky and sometimes trips me up, but at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me too much. And you can always replace the finder scope if you want and upgrade it with one that you like better. Oh, and I also like how this tripod has a little plate down here where you can store extra lenses and such. You know, that's kind of nice. But what about the visuals? Like any telescope, a lot of it depends on the weather, the temperature, all sorts of outside conditions and where, you're, where you are. From the experience I've had so far with this telescope, yeah, I haven't used it long enough to give you a definitive answer, but I'm kind of leaning towards disappointment. Honestly, the views aren't that much better than my 70 millimeter refractor telescope. The Barlow lens that came with it was nice, but I could have just got one of those from my other telescope and not pay the extra amount for everything else. The bra the bra lens did make a difference. And it might just be poor collimation, I'm not sure yet, but I just find this telescope a little hard to focus and sometimes I get distortion in the image. It is nice though that the supplied eyepieces have a higher eye relief, so you don't have to get as close to this eyepiece when you're looking through it to see through it. Um, whereas the other one I have to get completely, get my eye on it. it. It's not a really big deal with this telescope. With a smaller telescope and cheaper tripod, you know, actually touching the eyepiece can kind of shake it and make it harder to focus or maybe knock it out of alignment. So, I mean, this has less chance of bumping the telescope since you don't have to touch the eyepiece to look through it. That's, you know, I guess a, a pro. So the pros, well, it's an effective mount. The telescope's okay. On the, on the other hand, it's pretty heavy, not easy to maneuver, and can be difficult to focus or collimate from my experience. I'm gonna keep trying it out, see if I can get some better views with it, maybe recollimate it. Um, I think I will use my smaller telescope more often for its portability and still being pretty effective. Maybe just get a Barlow lens with it. Overall, it was fairly cheap. I'm not too disappointed. The good news is I do have some experience now with an equatorial mount, um, more experience aligning the finder scope, which also can take some time. And I just got to break down and learn how to collimate a telescope, I guess. Anyway. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I hope you have a good day. Whatever telescope you choose, I hope it works for you. And please, remember to smile. I mean, it definitely looks cooler.
And I do love these. I do love this mount. It's a nice mount. Huh. I don't know. Let's go see. Let's go see what I can find tonight. <laughs> <laughs>